and I'll do a little intro here. So I just want to welcome everybody to um, chapter, our discussion of chapter number five from the R for DS uh, book. What we're going to be talking about is data tidying today. And Boulevard has re uh, graciously taken on the responsibilities to lead us through this discussion today. So we really appreciate your time and leading today. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it over to you. Um, one quick thing, just a quick reminder for everybody that's on the call again, uh, this is, you know, pretty free flowing. Uh, so if you do have any questions, I'll be monitoring the chat. You can ask, ask questions there, but also feel free to come off mute or raise your hand or do whatever you need if you have any questions or comments. So, uh, like with that, I'll just turn it over to you. All right, let me start sharing here. Morning, I guess morning or afternoon. <laughs> Uh, share. All right, does everybody? Yay, it's working. Okay, uh, amazing. All right, so basically, uh, I guess entering into data science now in R and you know Python and stuff, we we talk about tidy and tidiness and things that are tidy and data sets. Uh, that are tidy versus non-tidy. And one of the objectives today is just to understand what's tidy and what's not tidy, how we pivot data, and how I think of pivoting is basically like transposing data. It's a more complicated way of transposing data. So you have a row and then you turn it into a column or vice versa. Um, and then, just recognize, I guess, use case scenarios where we have non-tidy data. And I guess I've learned that this is very context dependent. Everybody in different fields has either tidy data from the start or non-tidy data, and they have to transform it. Uh, I'm, a, I'm trained as, a, as an ecologist and entomologist and it's a lot of non-tidy data because you're out in the field with a clipboard taking notes and information and you're making it easy for yourself, uh, not for uh, the data analysis part. So this is where uh, this kind of differences between tidy and non-tidy data come in is when you're Entering data in a clipboard, you're just making it easy for yourself and you're not necessarily thinking of variables or observations and values. You're just what makes it faster so you can, at least for me, so I can get out of the rain or something like that. Um, so then tidy data is this concept of visualizing, you know, or, or having data stored in uh, columns, so having variables for me, those are variables. For people more in machine learning, they're called features or things like that. Uh, but it's just basically uh, what you're uh, taking into consideration. And then in as rows, you have observations. So each observ each row is an observation, which is for and and how I think of it is it's unique. Right. If you take all of those into account, it should be completely unique unless you have some sort of replicates and stuff like that. And then um, and even more, <laughs> another level of uniqueness is each cell. So the circles here. Uh, so each cell, uh, it's basically this, you know, this, the intersection of S and Y and you have a unique value for each cell. And um, I guess there's, there's a little bit of a stress here in this chapter of, you know, it's variables are hard to define. So it's what's meaningful for you and your analysis. And the content of those cells or values is also unique to, to what you're doing uh, or your use case scenario. Um, yeah, so I guess I kind of jumped ahead there. Yeah, basically we work with tidy data because this, this way of structuring and variables and observations just makes it a lot easier 
for uh, doing analysis. So for inputting into a linear function, for inputting into a, a t-test uh, or those kinds of things. Uh, this is how a lot of a lot of base R functions and a lot of tidyverse functions just take in the data better. And it's also very explicit, right? You say you have the category of country and you have US a hundred times, but then each one, uh, it's a, its own data point. It makes your data sets bigger, but uh, analysis better. So one example of this, <clears throat> I can't remember if this is, uh, yeah, this is a non-tidy one, right? So uh, for example, you, the data was being entered and you have the country and you have basically one row per country and you have many columns uh, saying cases in the year 99, in the year 2000, then population, which would be a, a, a variable, a, uh, also as a year, two years. So again, for the data input process, if you're entering data, maybe this is super easy. If, I don't know if you were collecting this data manually or say you have a historic sort of data project that you have to go in and get it manually. This is very easy to, to end up with something like that. Uh, I guess it's less so for automated you know, input systems where people are filling in surveys because people are thinking about infrastructure, about how that data is gonna end up. But you might end up with some legacy data sets that nobody thought about this way back. And this is what was easy. You know, there was a clerk entering data or an intern or a grad student entering data, so. Um, and then you have something that looks a little bit better, which is like, well, we have two entries for each country and we've split the years and we have year 99 and 2000. And then we have the variable cases and population. Actually, this is the tidy one, right? This is the one that we want to aspire to because we have year is a variable. We test things and compare years. We have however many cases, uh, let's say this is, uh, I think this was tuberculosis or something. Uh, let's say this is the flu or TB, and then the population. Uh, so you wanna end up with something like this, that it's very machine readable and it's also very human readable. Um, so if you, if you compare it to the previous one, right? The previous one we have to like slide and say you had 50 columns and you gotta be sliding to get an idea of what your data set has. With the second example, in four columns, we get the idea of what we're working with. Right? We understand that we have countries, that we have years, cases, and populations. So we have character, doubles, doubles, and, right? So uh, these are things that we can compute. These are factors or characters that we can categorize things with. Any, any, I think I'm moving fast, but any questions? <laughs> oh, let me I don't see. see any in the chat. I don't see any in the chat, but I think you're doing an, an excellent job so far of kind of explaining it. I, I think like the one thing that I'll add to is like, even if you have like a system that gives you data, I have found out that not every system that you work out will give you tidy data. Um, especially in my role, I, I work with a lot of like stuff coming out of systems and, even the systems that are designed to give you data, you'll be definitely thinking about this tidy data concept, so. That's true, yes, that's true, yeah. The, the other thing is that you might have it as tidy data, tidy data, but then you, and we will get into this a little bit, you get into uh, some obscure tests that you have to do and you have to, uh, you know, here's the fun, you have to pivot. You have to change how that data is structured for the sake of X or Y test um, for visualization. And then we have, this is, this is a decent attempt where we have 
uh, at least these first two here being a uh, sort of tidy, right? We have country, but then we have country four times and we have year duplicated, you know, by year. And it's because we have this type. We're considering the type as a, as a category uh, or as a character. And then the count of that. So that, um, sure, you can get the idea of what's going on here, but it's also really hard to start uh, doing computations with it or tests or things like that. So, you know, you would have to create a column that then takes 745 and divides it here. And, and, and it's just a little bit cumbersome. So with tidy, uh, let me see, do I go all the way now? Yeah. Okay. So I guess I told you all of this, but table one is our uh, best uh, or most tidy data frame, right? Like the, the tidy one, the one that uh, we're going to be mostly working with in our uh, workflows. Now, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, most real data is untidy and, and it facilitates goals. It facilitates, right, the goal of entering data fast or the goal of, um, you know, getting shit done, right? I, this, I, I was thinking about some examples of what, how you might end up, you know, I might follow the field, but sir, for example, you go to a community health clinic. Nurses there are taking in your, unless there's a QR code and things like that, they're mostly gonna be taking in data manually and it's for them to make it easy. Uh, whoever gets the, the short straw, <laughs> on, on uh, entering the data later has to think about these things. So you often need to tidy and the process of, of tidying is just changing it into this, this form that we've talked about. Now, uh, yeah, so sometimes changing, you know, from untidy to tidy you have these examples where you have measurement one, measurement two, and those are types of measurements, you know, say you took blood pressure and then uh, oxygenation levels or something like that. Those are just measurements. Those are just things that you're using a determined instrument to, uh, and that could be its own category on measurements. Um, but that's the usual that might be kind of obscure. Like if you don't understand the data set or you weren't the person taking the data, uh, you might not have that uh, information. Um, and this is where, you know, it's very context dependent, you know, kind of whatever you can figure out to make sense of the data. Um, mainly sometimes we're asked to make miracles out of the data. And sometimes we just can't ask those questions of the data because we don't have it in the right format. We have to transform it and munge it. Uh, or you're being asked to do something, you're like, well, actually, then I have to create a sort of dummy variable to be able to separate these so, so then it's in the right format. So I don't know, full variable or something like that. So then you can get it in the right format. Um, so we usually end up with either data sets that are too wide uh, or too long. So when we have too wide, which is the most common, uh, right? Like I said, one country and then just 50 columns of like, right? And you're like, sure, it's easy because I just have to go from left to right. And that hit, that has also, I think, to do with uh, Western world worldview, we read left to right. Uh, I'm not sure how uh, you know uh, other countries that read uh, right to left or think you know visualize text a little bit different. Uh, but we tend to end up with things that are too wide, um, and we tidy it up by making it longer. So going from 50 columns to four columns, but then we have you know whatever amount that. Uh, 
uh, calculates too in terms of rows. But I have to say it is easier to scroll down than to scroll horizontally. So now um, cases when we have too wide, right? So we have here, country, then we have year as um, variables, one observation per country. But we don't know what these observations are for. So there's missing data here, right? We have the years that these uh, data was collected, but what is, you know, 2,600 represent? What is 745 represent? Um, you know, we don't, we can assume that this is population, but I don't know, we could be talking about GDP or things like that. So, so it's missing information. Now, uh, the most common thing is that values end up as column names. Um, and by making it the data longer, you can take these values into their own uh, uh, taking data. Yeah, their own column. So here, 1999 and 2000 are actually values uh, that are important to us, not, <laughs> not column names. Um, and then the case that we end up with a too long uh, data set is where we have um, names of, vari of several variables that exist in cells as uh, as one column. So we make the, uh, the that data frame tidy by making it wider. So you either have something too wide and you need to make it long or too long, you need to make it wide. Uh, so you pivot and kind of alternate back and forth depending on what you need to do. Now, for example, too long, you know, this doesn't mean too long. Uh, I think I think I read this uh, and I imagine too long of ending up with like 2000 rows or something like that. No, this is just 12 rows, four columns, but this is excessive, right? It's too long. And because you have country here, then the years, then you have again, what's causing this is this whole type situation. Um, so it can be shorter uh, or tidier. Now, there's two functions, two very important functions appropriately named pivot longer or pivot wider. Uh, and these will really help us just uh, change that data to the format that we need it to, right? So take it from wide to long, from long to wide. And there's uh, various cases in the same function or the same workflow that you might use both because one helps you compute something one way and then you take the result of that computation and pop, pop it in, in a wider form or back and forth. Um, so um, they mainly take two arguments um, and strings, right? So basically they're gonna say, okay, you're gonna take the names of those variables that you're interested in, in changing and pivoting, uh, and you're gonna uh, put them in this other column, right? So you say names, you're gonna take column X, Y, Z, um, and then the values of those columns, X, Y, Z, you're gonna put it in a, a column named values or counts or whatever you need to, to name it with. So basically names takes where that data is coming from the column that that data is coming from, and then the values of those data and where it's going to be uh, put in a new column. So if you know a little bit about, uh, for example, mutate, mutate or things like that, where you 
compute another a whole another column or create a whole another column. This basically values creates a whole another column with the values that come from uh, names. So this is a very nice graphic showing that what we have. So if we look at pivot longer and we follow this arrow, we have these three columns, rep one, two, and three, right? So all columns equals. And then we're gonna call it, those columns are gonna, and the names of those columns are gonna go into a new column called replicate. So a new column called replicate, and it takes rep one, two, and three, and it you can, you know, turns it into part of an observation. Then uh, in pivot longer, those values, the blue ones are gonna come in and they're gonna go into the new column called blood press. So then it organizes it that way. So we see rep one, A, 120, rep, A, you know, rep one, patient B, uh, rep one patient B over here, right? So it really, uh, it's very neat that it's uh, matched. There's cases I've done this before where I've mismatched it. Um, so it's something to always double check. Um, I don't remember the case where that happened to me, but it was after some pivot longer, pivot wider that I ended up shifting by like one row. Um, and then the opposite, right? So for pivot wider, oh, we're gonna take it from replicate, we're gonna turn it into its own columns. And then that data is gonna go values from, what column is that coming from? So blood press. Press, yeah, blood pressure, I guess. Um, yeah. So now an example of this is where we have country, this uh, table 4A, uh, which is you know not tidy, we're saying. So here we have some tidy convention where we use a bang before the column name. And it's saying, choose all that are not country, right? And then it's gonna go, uh, those columns that are not country are gonna go into year. And then the values of those are gonna go into cases. And then we have appropriately named tidy table or table tidy, and it does it like this. This can be totally different. Maybe you don't want to um, say uh, write it this way, and you want to say columns equals a uh, C. So you have to create a vector C parentheses nineteen ninety nine comma two thousand, and you're just telling it which ones you want, right? Because maybe, maybe it was a bigger data set and there's a bunch of numerical ones or double ones. So, so uh, and then we want to pivot wider. So we want to go back. And basically, we just have to kind of um, do the same, but changing names from names to to names from. So to and from. Um, and then it gives you the same data set that you started with. So I, I did want to jump in here. I think there's one thing that usually catches that I found people struggle with between the difference between pivot wider and pivot longer is the names to and names from. So if you scroll up real quick, Boulevard to like pivot longer. So you can see names to year is quoted. And then values two is quoted. And if you go down, it back down to it's not quoted. And so I found that kind of trips people up sometimes when they first do this. And the reason why is when you think about pivot longer, you're actually creating columns that don't exist. And so you have to quote it. But with pivot wider, you don't have to create a year or cases variable and so we don't have to quote it and so i find that sometimes people get tripped up with that so i just wanted to kind of it's a subtle difference but it's actually really important to actually know the difference between pivot wider and pivot longer and what's actually kind of happening so just wanted to highlight that yeah yeah and it, and this goes to like how tidyverse handles strings 
right? You're giving a string for a column name. But once it's in a tidy format, um, and it, you know, functions in the tidy ways know how to handle that and know that this is not an object, but a string in a, a column, right? Or in the data set that you're working with. Uh, so it takes it from there. Now, so that was super simple, but sometimes names are very complex. Uh, I just actually watched that video that Colin sent out, the five minute video names, and it was, had this excellent example of, you know, CSV files named by, you know, the date, potentially the, the, the method used, the assay number, so it's a very complex name where it has dates, it has maybe the lab number, the accession number, DNA. So, so all of that is information more than just a conventional, you know, a crazy naming name. So sometimes we might uh, take data that way, right? And, and turn those names into data. And we end up with, still we end up with an X underscore one or something like that. Um, so here we're basically saying by creating this vector that we see here, I guess you just have to follow my cursor, uh, saying, okay, the names are going to go to column method name and then column method NR. And this is actually a, a little bit, um, uh, and then we have to specify the separator. Uh, it's not here, but we'll see it in a second. We have to, the separator is an underscore. So it's going to say, okay, that first part of that string is going to go to this method name. The second part is going to go to method uh, underscore NR. And then where that values are going. And then vice versa. So um, pivot wider takes it a little bit different in terms of like glue syntax. Uh, so you see the curly brackets and stuff like that. And we can get into that. Um, but so this is again uh, kind of a, an example of that. We have, oh, we have year 2018. I don't know, let's call it test A and test B. But 2019, we only did test A, we have test A and test B. And, but something, uh, I think what's happening here is that something's not quite right. So we said, we're gonna pivot, we're gonna pivot all columns. You're gonna take that information and put it in year and type the separator from these um, is uh, the underscore, and then we're gonna call it percentage. So we end up with a nice tidy table that has 2018A, 2018B, et cetera. Um, now, if we wanna go back, we do this. Now, I think there's a little bit of a, a skip here is that we're creating, a, in, in the book actually, there's a little bit of talk about creating these zeros because in the actual data set, there is not a 2018B and not a 2019A. But there's a way that uh, we can create like NA values or like placeholder values to basically make it match up. So in our analysis, we understand zero as it didn't happen that year uh, or it wasn't you know performed or collected, et cetera. But then this just allows us to, to end up with a data set that is tidy. So it has A and B, A and B for each year, regardless of if there was a collection of that data or not. Um, I read this in the, in the book. And so I, I can't really recall it and go, so I'm not gonna take us there, but if somebody can find it, that'd be great. Um, so there's, it's just for handling NA values and handling, um, yeah, those uh, kind of dummy values. 
So I think we're going into that. We're going, <laughs> sorry. We're going into missing values, sorry. Um, yeah, so we have this data set billboard where we have Tupac charting in 2000, February. And then we have the entries, right, by week. 76 weeks in the charts and then the rank. And as we can see, there's NA values, right? It, it either dropped out of the top 100 uh, and stuff like that, right? So there's some NA values there. And we're going to pivot longer. We're going to say, hey, you're going to take the column to start with week. You're going to name it week. And then you're going to take the values to rank. And then we end up with many rows of Tupac and uh, the rank that it placed, right? Now we still have Tupac, say, because there's 76 columns, even as, if Tupac drop out of the top 100, there's just gonna be NA entries for, for him. Now we end up with a data set that has 24,000 rows, five columns. Uh, why is that? So we have so many NAs. <laughs> so we have a lot of NAs that we're not necessarily going to, uh, they mean zero, they mean there's no data there. It doesn't, uh, in, in this type of analysis, it doesn't, uh, you know, average or stuff like that. So basically the way to handle that is that we're gonna drop NA values. We want all the entries that are complete. So uh, all the observations that are complete. So now we have Tupac was in the chart seven weeks. I guess this is when he started, right? And so seven weeks post February 26th and then dropped out, right? Now we have, where are these people together, together? Oh my God. And, uh, and then the rank. And we end up with a data set that is tidy and far uh, smaller, right? So still, a, still in the thousands, but 500 versus 2,400. Uh, 5,000 versus 24,000. So now, so we have a factor daily. Let me see what this was. Okay, okay, this is what we're going into a little bit those missing values and whatnot. So we have data set, we have four rows, two columns. The levels that it has is Monday through Sunday, so seven days. Now, when we pivot, we end up with like, well, Tuesday one, Thursday two, Friday, but there's something missing. There's five here and four here. Um, so what's going on? There's missing values for these app, uh, the factors that uh, have absent T data. Now, what it what it does is we use the argument name expand and pivot wider. We're gonna take the names from day, the values from value, and you're gonna expand the name. So I do want you to include the NA values, right? So in the previous example with pivot longer, we were getting rid of our NA values because it's giving us numerical and it's potentially we don't want it. I think if I had a data set like that, what I would do is like end up with that at 24,001 and be like, oh my God, this is too many NA values. And, and let me remove it. So I would end up with kind of an intermediary uh, object that I would kind of evaluate and, and, and think about what I want. And, and in this case, it's something similar where it's important for us to understand that I don't know, right? On Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, data wasn't taken or that whatever this daily data set is. 
and you know people didn't show up let's say this is count of people coming in through the door and so i want to know that information uh and the fact if i don't put names that span it's just not going to give me that because it says well there's no information there so uh that's just not included uh, i prefer these kind of more explicit um things where i can just say see everything and say okay this is the data set that i end up i end up with na values and then let me correct if i already had this workflow set up and i know what's going on maybe i start omitting this but this is you know to understand how our data um set uh, is structured and could behave. Now, so those missing values, right? Remember saying, remember this example, we have zeros there. We ended up with perp wide. What happened? I believe what happened is that we turned the NAs to zeros. So suppose we have this and you want to make it wide and add zeros, not NAs, right? So you would go with something like this, pop up, you're going to change it. Ah, but you don't like it because you really want those zeros because you're ending up with 2018A, but 2019B, but then worse, right? Is it missing? So we want to be explicit about that data, about the fact that it was omitting them, doesn't you know kind of show the whole picture. Now we're saying you're going to expand the values, the names, sorry, and you're going to fill those uh, areas with zeros. I don't know. You could say it with like, I don't know what happened. You could fill it up with something else, right? You could fill it. Say you were taking uh, a lot of the data that I work with, it tends to be taxonomical data, so unknown species or we, we know the genus, so we know it's a, a cat, Felis, but we don't know the species, you know, Domesticus. So we, I would fill it with something along those lines if I was wearing, working with some character data and stuff like that. Uh, but in this case, we just want zero. Zero means it got done or it didn't get done. And it's also, it's also nicer for analysis. Uh, unless you're doing an analysis that you can omit uh, NAs, right? Remove NAs or omit NAs, and you might decide to keep them or not. So, okay, so, so far we have names of variables and uh, values of a variable. So in, in a one-to-one -one, uh, scenario, so one type of variable uh, or one type, yeah, one type of variable name to one type of value versus multiple names uh, and variables to uh, one value. So a, a one to one and a two to one or two plus uh, to one. Um, now you have different situations where we have variable names that are included uh, in the white tables columns. And then you have multiple var values, variables names that are included in the white tables columns. So um, let's go into that. And it goes back to the exploration. Knowing what NAs represent is critical. Yeah, yes, yeah. Knowing what NAs represent in your data is, is important, right? Um, so, um, oh, is this one? Okay. So we have here, it changes a little bit. Um, so we want to say name from pivot longer names are going into method name. And then, uh, you see that it changes and it's called, a, you know, quotes, period, value. So this period value is part of the function. 
And it's just that period doesn't mean anything, but it's just trying to differentiate itself. If you decide to name something value, then it's not going to conflict because in the function, it's called period value. Um, I don't know if you decided to call it value values or something like that. So then it's saying the first part of that name is going to go into method name. The second part of that name, uh, it's going to be into value. So if you can see here that, that we didn't specify the name of that new column because it's taking the name of that column from whatever string was after that separator, right? So instead of me typing, you could you could hard code it and say, you know, comma, quote, BL, press, and it'll do the same. But here, our, our column names are doing the work for us. They already have the name, uh, or say you had X, Y, Z, BLP, BL press, or it said, and also had X, Y, C, BL press two, right? So you could create two columns um, called that. Uh, so that is basically what's gonna happen. Then the same, it goes from here. It's taking that name from the column and turning it into the uh, second part of the string, um, the string. Now, this is the case where we have cases, countries, we have cases, and, and it's basically the same type, cases, but different years. So we want to say, take everything that's not country. And in this case, we want that first column to be the value, and then year. So you want the first part of that string to be whatever it's named here, the separator, and then you end up with country, year, and cases. You didn't have to write case here, and this is just a little bit more flexible way when you have, um, yeah, just a more flexible way of, of writing this. Um, now, if we want to recreate it, we just write it this way. And we're using blue syntax where we have uh, embrace and single curly brackets and a separator and then the year. And we yeah, end up with the I, same. I will admit that this is like the first, like when I, the dot value, it took me a second. I had to reread that section to like really understand what dot value is, but your example there where you said like if you had blood pressure like you had blood pressure one blood pressure two you could use this name two and that dot value to create two columns without having to explicitly write those out which is actually a really cool kind of tip that i just picked up from you so yeah it's uh that this was like this section i had to read twice because i was like i don't know what dot value is doing but it, it definitely clears it up a little bit more for me yeah, yeah. Say, say you took, uh, you know, blood pressure with one instrument and blood pressure with a second instrument, and then you just have two columns, uh, and you want to keep them separate, even though it's blood pressure. But yeah, you, know, you have the old blood pressure thing, and then the new one. Instruments are going to be different, um, so you might use it in that that, that way. So now. And and this exactly, I I guess this goes a little bit into into the blood pressure one, blood pressure two, uh, where we have I guess two two methods and value. You just have to call value one time, and right, and and then the separator, and then where the values are gonna go, they're gonna go to rep a. Uh, the names from are going to go to a replicate, but then you end up with right X and Y, blood pressure one, blood pressure two, or whatever we want to call it. I think this would be blood pressure. And I don't know what the twelves would be, um, but it's very interesting that it's not telling you to write 
names to equal C value, comma, dot value, comma, replicate. It's just basically uh, taking the uh, value, it's identifying that there's two different ones just because it recognizes, right, the two string characters that are different before the separator that we've indicated, right? So it identifies that regular expression and or that string and, and separates it into different types of columns, which would be in pivoting wider, feeding values from, and then a vector of S and a Y. So we have date of birth, child one, date of birth, child two, name, child one, name, child two. So we can already see that child one, child two, child uh, throughout is consistent. The change is uh, date of birth and name of the child. So when we pivot longer this, we say, hey, take everything that's not family. And you're going to say, take a column called whatever the value is that's incoming. And then another one that's called child. And then the separator is uh, underscore. Drop the values, yes, drop the trues. So you end up with child, the one that you hard coded here, and then the one that it identified that from the strings, right? So date of birth and name, uh, right? So it identified that this is kind of consistent, but this isn't. So those are gonna be the, the columns. Uh, so when we flip that, we're doing the same. We're giving it, hey, from columns, DOB and name, you're going to um, basically string those together and you're going to end up with that old type of data frame. Now, uh, yeah, so there's, there's a lot um, here and these functions are um, I feel like in the past, I'm like, oh, I know how to use pivot longer, but it, depending on the data set I'm working with, it like, you know, it kicks me in the butt because there's always something of how we want to transform and move the data and, and how the columns are named and things like that. And if you're working with um, similar data, but they have different column names and stuff like that. You always have to, to modify these. Um, I wish I had data sets that were always named the same way, even though I try. Um, so, um, so you can add a drop or add, a, you know, column names and name prefixes. You can also drop a ID column names and you can generate rows uh, with missing values, you know, creating with the ID at span argument. So there's a whole um, kind of uh, framework of, you know, what to add, what to drop, and how you want that data to change and, the, and then the, the name of the columns that you want to end up with. Um, oh, here we go, I guess we finished, yeah. Um, so take a look at, uh, it's a very nice chapter. Take a look at the chapter. And then I haven't looked at the vignette, but I imagine, I, I guess I haven't looked at it for this, but I know I've ended up in this vignette before. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah, excellent, excellent. I think that's, I think you did an excellent job covering it. Um, you mentioned like pivot wider and pivot longer kind of kicking your butt sometimes. It, it certainly does. And if I have anybody here that was like, the old way of doing it was, I can't remember. I think it was like spread and gather. Like if you remember but, spread and gather, that those yeah, pivot and, wider, and pivot longer makes it easier. Go ahead, yeah. It's it was p spread spread and gather and melt oh melt and uh, reshape and Shape. which uh, I, I think I found some old call the other day that had that still and I was like oh my god um 
but yeah, so those were kind of things that got you there, but yeah. So yeah, if anybody's new and you're like looking up how to like pivot and you come across like some old code that uses some of those functions that we talked about, check them out because they might be useful, but pivot wider, pivot longer is where it's at. Like just stick with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if they, because some of them might say deprecated and whatnot. And so uh, Tidyverse might tell you, you know, this doesn't work anymore or um, but it's definitely out there for sure. Uh, those were the ones uh, when I, 2015, I remember deep IR and there was reshape and spreading out. So. Yeah, for sure. And then also too, I think just kind of build on this a little bit. Um, there is like for tidy data and it talks about it in the book too. There is an academic paper that uh, I think Hadley wrote and I don't know if he co-authored yeah. it with somebody. Hank. Say what? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm so sorry. My audio's on. <laughs> My oh, senior cat okay. was about to attack the baby. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was I was scolding yeah. uh, being a parent. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's all good. <laughs> this is a paper. Yeah, I, I unmuted I, I, um, to thank you about like the old terms is why I unmuted. Like I thought that was really useful um, and I'll be looking out for that because I am new to R um, and that does kind of sound like a headache of what we've traded it out for. I like the new terms for sure. The update. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, there's just, I mean, this is, this is, this is dynamic code. It's constantly changing. It's software that's constantly changing. But um, uh, I, I highly suggest that anybody that gets into this is to read the tidy data paper. I know it's, um, it's worth it. Even if you're not in academic spaces, it's, it talks about like, it talks about the importance of it and kind of lays out like the design decisions. And I think when it comes down to, like actually using all of the tools and the functions in the tidyverse, it's really based on tidy data. If you can get your your data into tidy data, it will work across. In most cases, um, the tools within the tidyverse. Um, so, let's see. I think I can stop sharing, right? Yeah, absolutely. You can stop sharing. Um, the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting and um, was like these concepts have been, talk been talked about for thousands of years. Like I was showing an example um, when I was at Posit Con conference when they were talking about DuckDB, like how like people were making tables thousands of years ago on like clay tablets and like there's actual like tables. And so like these concepts have been talked about for thousands of years. They're just being now applied into code and software. And I should say just now because computer science has been trying to figure this out for a long time too. And it's, um, it's really interesting to see, like, this is not like some of these concepts have been here for thousands of years, even with like yeah. physical medium. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a very coordinate Cartesian, you know, concept it's X and Y, right. Observations and variables, uh, sorry, observations, variables, and, and then unique the the intersection of both is unique so uh yeah super super useful and then um, i think that also I, brings up another oh go ahead go ahead sorry i keep jumping no, no, go ahead, go ahead. i think i think what's also important about that too and i think a lot of people i think some people have this consternation when they think about the tidy versus like well it doesn't work in every case and that's true tidy data is specific for specific use cases. It's not going to be applicable to every analysis, every visualization. And so this is just one tool in a toolbox of things that you have. Like, I mean, just an example for me, like I was doing an analysis that required a matrix, you know, and so I had to use a matrix rather than a, a you know, tidy data. And so it's not the end all be all. And so there are definitely different applications for what you're trying to do in the context that you work in. So, yeah, yeah, this is exactly different, different data, different, different questions. You got to understand the question that you're trying to answer to then how does it look? 
uh, I've ended up doing pivot longers where it's like, you know, a bunch of uh, thousands of rows and it's just pretty much duplicate data, but then that's the way it needed to be to then run whatever analysis. Um, because then, you know, it's able to either take the average or whatnot. And, you know, some, sometimes you, you think you have it and then you pop it into an R function and the function doesn't like how the data is and you got to figure it out what, what, what that error means and what, how does it take that input, right? It needs either a matrix or a vector or a list or so. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Thank you all. Yeah, uh, we, we have a couple more minutes here. If people have to jump off, go ahead, Bolivar. It, we just want to just say we really appreciate you taking the time to lead us in the discussion today. And I just want to open it up if anybody else has any other questions, comments, or any other points that they want to raise before we end today's call. Go on once. I, go on. I will add. I don't, I'm, I'm learning SQL and I feel like tidyverse is modeled after that. And it's Very so true. easy to translate. I'm like, oh, this is just like, you know, selecting or mutating or joining or, you know, so yeah. the same that's that you're gonna like learn with this. It's really, it's really applicable to that. And I think a lot of SQL data is pretty much in tidy kind of structure. Yeah, it kind of goes back to that like table structure. Like I don't I don't know if you're familiar with uh DB plier. Um this is a More function like that. that yeah that like translates into it. I think there's also too uh there is a function somewhere that like if you write like D plier pipelines, you can like take that and then like use this function to translate into SQL query and so it will like actually output like what the SQL query is or the SQL syntax for it so that's been useful as well that sounds pretty sweet that's super <laughs> handy yeah I think I should find that so I think I should find I know if, I don't know if it is part of db plier but there is a function that like you can do that oh yeah it's called it's called show query so if you go to db plier it's called show query so I link db plier db plier and there's a function called show query and it will show you like what Perfect. that looks like Sweet. in Deep Pipe. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, cool. Yeah, uh, let's see. I think next week we have Dewey. Uh, Dewey wasn't here today, so we just have Dewey for next week. We'll talk about Chapter 6, Workflow Scripts and Projects. Really appreciate jumping in, Bolivar, again. Really appreciate you taking the time mm -hmm. to lead us. Uh, I can hang out for a couple more minutes, but if not, I'll see everybody next week. So thank you very much. See you all. Take care. Great job. See everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Okay. <laughs>